Greetings and welcome back to the lab. Today we're going to do another kit uh, I bought on Amazon. Uh, and this one, interestingly, comes from the Ding Dong store. Uh, I need to look at my listing here. Let's pull that up. It says electronic colorful 10 LEDs solder practice, soldering practice board. Uh, PCB DIY kit, soldering kit, learning electronics. Wow, that's a lot of re repetition. Uh, CD4017. CD I already know that is actually a chip, a model of a chip. And that is, uh, I believe, a counter or something like that in the CD series. Um, let's take a quick look at... Whoops. I'll leave that one. I was going to try and bring up this description here. Uh, about this item, please check the packaging list before soldering. If there are any omissions, please contact us. Okay, we'll do that. Uh, please refer to the soldering instructions attached to the package. If not included, please contact, you, please contact us for electronic soldering instructions. I think I can kind of handle it. Uh, the product contains small components. Please keep away from children. That makes sense. There's some really tiny components in here. And sharp. Uh, our PCB board is made of glass fiber material with a thickness of 1.6 millimeters. It is flat and not easy to be folded and damaged. Yeah, usually circuit boards are kind of hard to fold. Um, the circuit on the PCB is clear. It can be it can withstand larger currents and is suitable for a variety of experimental needs. The solder joint is treated by spraying tin. Its impedance is more stable and reliable and it makes soldering easier. After many times of welding, the welding point is not easy to fall off, which increases the success rate of welding. They were doing so good up until that point. Uh, basically what they're doing is they're talking about the PC board and how the actual board is manufactured. Um, it really doesn't give a whole lot of indication right off the bat what this thing actually does. Uh, so let's crack it open and see what we find. And I already had to kind of pre-open this just so I'd be ready for the video. Here we go. Here's their identification card, just so they know what's in the kit. Uh, there's some instructions on here. Ding dong store. Uh, all right, I will. I will let you take a take a. You can pause the video and read that if you want. This is an advertisement for the store. That's not really what I'm about here. Um, but just for completeness, I wanted you to be able to see the contents. It looks like we do have the instructions, so we don't have to contact them about that. Let's see. Let's hold it over a couple of times. Looks like it could be double-sided. And it looks like I'm on the second side already. All right. CD4017 Colorful LED Light Soldering Instructions. First... The kit's instructions. Through soldering the kits, you can learn to master the relevant soldering points and independently complete the soldering practice according to the operation. Through the analysis of the principle of the sound control lamp kit, master the knowledge of the CD4017 structure of the voice control lamp. So it's a voice control circuit. Uh, and uh, it looks like it, yeah, I do remember looking at this now and realizing there's a microphone and there's a bunch of lights on it so it's supposed to do something when it gets music when it gets sound uh, q1 and its peripheral circuits form a simple circuit the mic converts the sound signal into an electrical signal it is coupled to q1 for amplification by c3 a high low voltage signal is formed at the collector of q1 a sufficient amplitude voltage is sent to the counting input of cd4017 14 feet. Yes, and their grammar, not only the grammar is a little odd, but the punctuation. 
I'm not sure what the 14. I'm guessing it means from within 14 feet you can, it can be, you can be heard. This will uh, register sound from 14 feet away. But that's the, that's not really. If you think about it, if you were to put this thing next to a train, and the train set off the horn 100 feet away, it would probably register. So it depends on how loud it is as well as how far. Um, every time a pulse is received, the high level of the Q0 through 9 output of the counter is sequentially shifted by one bit, and the corresponding LED is lit, thereby generating a feeling of running water. L11 is connected to the 4017 count output terminal C0. When L1 to 5 is lit, the C0 end of 4017 outputs a high level and, and lights up L11. When L6 to 10 is lit, the C0 end outputs a low level and L11 does not light. If you think that L11 is unsightly, you can also install without affecting the circuit. Uh, third, soldering content and steps. Um, I think with that whole, before I jump into the soldering content and steps, uh, all of that, I think, was intended to basically mean, um, let's see if I can sort of show on this, on this circuit here. Let me grab a, where's my pencil? There's my pencil. I can use that, to, or my pen. Uh, so here's the microphone right here. And so there's some circuitry here leading to this chip. And the way the chip works is basically a counter chip. So it's expecting a pulse going into the chip. And then every time it pulses, it increases the count. So literally, you get a pulse, it goes to one. You get a pulse, it goes to two. You get another pulse, it goes to three, four, five, all the way up through ten. And then once it gets to ten, it rolls over. Uh, this way you can build, uh, do it in what they call decades. So you could have a counter for the ones place, a counter for the tens place, a counter for the hundreds place, and so on. And so I think that's what they're attempting to do, but they also are saying that they set it up so that the rollover actually happens, I think, at five. So I'm not exactly sure how they've done that. We'd have to look at the circuit in more detail. I'm not sure if I want to do that just yet. I really kind of want to build this and see what it looks like, and if it warrants, we'll go back and look at the the details. Um, I'm really my intent with these videos is not to be an electronics tutorial, but building kits, seeing what they look like, so that if you want to buy the same kit, you can do that and build it and have fun with it or experiment with it. Uh, this does really open up some possibilities for experimenting or hacking, depending on how you want to look at it. Um, third, soldering content and steps. Welding sound control light kit. Refer to the silk screen of the circuit board to solder the components to the circuit board. Pay attention to the installation directions, the LED, CD4017, chip, and capacitor. Okay, when they say direction, they don't mean like the directions here. Uh, on this page, they're talking about it's they are you can put them in backwards. You need to pay attention to that. After the welding is completed, connect the power supply and use the microphone to observe the changes of LED. Fill in the data in table one. Table, uh, I don't see a table one. Oh, okay. Table one is here, it's not very clearly labeled. Number of lights, number of measurements, sound size, light speed. One is relatively small or slow. Two, louder and faster. Okay. Like they're just saying basically a, a, uh, a softer sound will make it count slower. A louder sound will make it count faster. Uh, also says observe the change of LED brightness carefully and find out the law of D11. Fill the data Fill in the data in. Uh, table 2, lighting, lighting relationship, D11 status, lighting number, bright D678910, off D12345. All right, I'm not going to belabor the point. Let's get to actually building this thing. Let's take a look at what comes in the package. It looks like 
and you kind of the main package, and then you have a, basically a battery pack. Uh, probably also possible to do it another way, but I uh, wanted to take a look at some of the components. They didn't, I don't know if they provided an actual component list on this. Uh, that's kind of sad. No, they didn't. Um, something, something they could do a little bit better. Uh, their English is a little bit better than typical, at least on their listing. But uh, once you pull up the instructions to try and build the thing, that's pretty bad. So let's empty this out. Um, this will be fun. We've got two sets of two resistors. Uh, let's take a look at the circuit board while I move things around here. Um, R4, R2, R3, R1. No indication of what the value is unless... Okay, they did put it in the instructions in, in their circuit diagram. Uh, so if you're not used to reading circuit diagrams, unfortunately, you're going to, hopefully the, I'll be able to help you here. Uh, R1 is a 20K, R3 is a 20K, um, R5 is a 470, and R4 is a 470. That Wait, so there's one, two, three, there's five. LEDs. Oh, R2 is a 2 meg. Okay, so these two here are the same. And this one and that one up there, I'm hoping it's coming through, are the same. So there should be a fifth LED, uh, uh, sorry, fifth resistor in this package. There we go. There's number five. And by process of elimination, that one is going to be the uh, what was it? The two mega two mega ohm, almost said megabyte. Um, let's see. We've also got the microphone. I'm just used to some of these parts, so I happen to know that's a microphone. Uh, we've got we've got a transistor. We've got a header, probably for power. We've got a couple of different capacitors. These are electrolytic capacitors and those are the ones that can be put in backwards. Do we want to put them in the right way? We've got the chip, the CD4017 that they've been talking about. And we've got what looks to be 10 LEDs. And I am just curious enough to try and figure out what color LEDs these are. Uh, let me switch to the back to the listing. I want to see if there's a picture that shows the colors. Oh, there's a circuit board. Ah, there's your parts list. 12 LEDs. From D1 to D11 is somehow 12 LEDs. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Nope, they didn't double their count on any of them. So from 1 to 11 somehow equals 12. Uh, that's not good. Uh, yeah, this is just built. So I don't know what color these are. We're about to find out. I've got a, a little three volt button cell battery, a watch battery. I'm going to attempt. Oh, it's flashing. Oh, now that's interesting. All right, let's move the rest of them over. Let's we'll we'll run through them quickly, and we'll count to see if there's twelve of them here. Twelve. Okay, looks like there's twelve of them. Um, they can't count, and they gave me an extra. Okay, let's see. We've got a circuit board here. They don't really give us a whole lot of information, but we learned from the last one uh, that it makes sense to actually put the lowest uh, or the lowest profile component in first, and that would probably be all of the resistors. 
The other thing I know from personal experience, just things to watch out for, um, this chip right here is going to have to go into the circuit board. I want to make sure that before I put this in, that I'm not going to put something and it's going to make it hard to get that in there. Um, yeah, and I'm also looking at, we've got the transistor here, we've got a capacitor, a capacitor, the microphone, it looks like I can fit everything in there without interfering too badly. So let's go with the lowest profile components first. We'll get the resistors in there. We'll get that all straightened out. I'm going to go with the uh, single resistor first, which is supposed to be the 2 meg, which is R2. And if I grab my magnifying glass whoops okay uh, let's see what I want to do is check the color code on that I'll try and get it clear enough and get it into you know what I'm gonna put it back on the mat here let me see if I can't get the wow I'm picking up the light there we go. Maybe that'll work. Either way, I'm going to go ahead and just use it myself. Let's see. It appears to be red, black, black, yellow, which would be two, zero, zero, and four zeros. Two hundred. Yep, two meg. So if you find one that is red, black, black, yellow, now what's a little confusing is the tolerance band is also kind of a brownish color so you have to get it from the right direction but I don't think this is gonna be confused well the 20k might be a little confusing let's hope though process of elimination there was only one of these and so that is R2 correct yeah R2 this is not polarized uh, so it doesn't matter what direction I put it in I'm going to go ahead and put that in. They are already spread just slightly, so we're good on that. Let's find the 20, which would also be uh, 20K would be, let me think, be red, black, black, orange, I believe. Two hundred no no red black black red. Well, that's a little confusing, but there it is. This is it. Uh, they have not marked. Nice. The good kits will actually have this marked, so you can see that it's twenty k just on these end pieces here. But it doesn't look like they bothered to do that here. Red black black red. Okay, hopefully that is visible to you. I'm going to take these. These are the 20K. This R1 and R3. Let's get those in there. Form the leads. Okay, R1 and R3. Here's R1. And get R3. Well, I'm forming the leads. Okay, that looks good. I'm going to go ahead and solder these now. So you will need some of your own solder. It does not come with the kit. Make sure I'm still in frame here. I'll admit I'm not as experienced as some other YouTubers like Big Clive trying to build electronics on camera. I don't have the dexterity that he has either. 
he could literally be holding the circuit board in one hand along with the solder while approaching with the soldering iron in the other hand okay almost now I would recommend if you're new to building kits don't try and do three resistors at the same time uh, try and do them one at a time it, you'll, it'll just save you some grief get my snippers out here and I can snip I'll also say put put your finger on the the end of it after the solder after the soldering uh, has cooled down a little bit but if you do that then you won't have it pinging across the room uh, I need to solder I need to clip all these leads because they get in the way while you're trying to put other components so that's got that I got that one more there we go all right we'll just push these off to the side this is our our extra leads in case we need them okay we got three resistors let's get the other two process of elimination these have to be the right ones and they should be 470 which would be yellow violet brown uh, you can look up the resistor color code if you're not sure what I'm just go to Google and type in resistor color code you'll see a whole bunch of pictures let me see if I can yeah it's kind of backwards that's 470 that's a little you know, I'm so used to the old-fashioned ones, not the military, not the 1% tolerance ones. Four seven zero, oh. yeah, and a zero multiplier, uh, or basically zero extra zeros. So 470. And this is going to have to be for, where was it, R4 and R5 kind of makes sense and they're over on this side of the board there's our four and our five Going in. Okay, that feels a little bit squirrely. Yeah, I think they've settled. What am I looking at? Oh, okay. The leads are kind of pointing down, not the way I wanted. All right, there we go. That's better. Should be good. Yeah, they're sitting up just slightly proud, but that's okay. I'm not going to worry too much about it. Okay. More for the pile. This one didn't want to sit down very well. Okay. That's got that resistor okay so we've got all five resistors in uh, what should we do you know what I'm gonna go for the capacitors next and we're just gonna work our way down until we have single components except for the LEDs uh, so this capacitor now this is tricky there's two capacitors in the circuit I need to look back at the circuit the first one is a one microfarad a BC3 
and C2 is 100 microfarad. So let's see if we can figure out which one is which. We should have a 1 and a 100. And for that, we're going to need the magnifying glass because the text is printed on these. Okay, I can see it's a 50 volt, but that's not what I'm looking for. There it is. That's going to be particularly hard to show. I'm hoping that'll come through. I'm looking at my camera to make sure I've got it lined up right. Hopefully that comes through. This is the one microfarad. Uh, just for comparison, it's not the best way to look at it, but the other capacitor is larger and the value is indeed larger. So uh, the 100 is physically larger than the 1. Uh, now, the 1 microfarad capacitor is C3. And I got C3, C3 and C2 here. So C3 goes on here. Now the other thing is to look for on an electrolytic capacitor, and I'm hoping I can get this to come through. If not, I'll show you a, a photo. Uh, but there is a band on here and a negative. So that means that's the negative side of the capacitor. And there is a tiny little plus sign. On C3, there's a tiny little plus sign right there. That tells me what direction to put this capacitor in. Actually, now that I think about the capacitors are the tallest components, that's going to make this slightly more complicated to build. So... Okay, I'm going to end up putting one of the LEDs on. That'll solve my problem. But first, I'm going to get this capacitor on there. I've got it lined up with the proper polarity. Okay. It looks like I got both of those. And then when, when the holes are that close together, you want to check to make sure you haven't bridged the connection. I'm going to cut the leads off. I'm going to hold them so they don't ping across the room. And then I can drop them into my pile there. Then I'm going to get an LED. And this will be a little bit more obvious soon. Now, with LEDs, the longer leg is positive, the shorter leg is negative. If I look at D11 here, that's where that LED is going to go. You can see there's a little plus sign there. That tells me the longer leg goes in that hole. It takes a little practice, but you'll eventually get it. Fortunately, these are 5 millimeter LEDs, so if I want to switch them out to do my own little hack, I can do that. But for the moment, we're just going to do this. Why does this feel like I'm looking at it wrong? Okay. Oop, my soldering iron needs to be cleaned. That'll help. Okay, that's got that. Now I'm going to try and cut both leads at the same time. That did not work. So perhaps you shouldn't attempt that. There's one. Yeah, these leads are a little bit thicker than the others. There we go. That's got that. So I got one capacitor, one LED. Let's get the other capacitor in there. This should be... The 100, yep. And I can visually verify it. And I'm looking for the band. The leads are a little bit twisted, so it's slightly confusing. But also, the negative band on this one is shorter. 
That's not a guarantee it's always going to be like that, but I can see that makes it a little bit easier. I know where my positive is. I'm going to stick it in the hole here. Uh-oh. Did I make a mistake and put some solder there? Yeah, maybe. Oops, yep, there's a tiny little solder ball there. That happened on the last kit. I need to be careful about that. There we go. A little bit with the soldering iron, or the clean soldering iron tip, and I managed to get it cleared. Now I should be able to put the positive side where it goes. There we go. The holes on this particular circuit board are set up so that you can actually drop the capacitor all the way down. Uh, you want to be careful when you're putting in certain components. You don't want to stress the legs too much. If you do, you can break the leg right off. Then you're having to find a replacement component. Also, when it comes to the taller ones, oops, having a real problem there. There we go. That was really sloppy, and if you look carefully, you can see it's now sitting proud of the board. So what I'm going to do is actually heat up both joints because it's close enough together, and with this finger, I'm going to push it back down. Except that I now have a solder bridge. Can you see that? So now I need to clear that. Heat it up. Try and pull the excess away. Don't heat it for too long. You could burn the component. Let's make sure everything else is bridge free. Yep, I think we're good. I'm going to clean the soldering iron. Put it away. Cut the leads. Okay. That should take care of that. Now let's get that transistor in before it gets impossible to put it in. Now there's a flat side on this side and a curved side on that side and correspondingly on the circuit board there is a flat side here and a curved side there. You want to match that up so you get it in in the right direction. And what I tend to do is if I can get the first leg in I can kind of splay it out, put a little pressure on it and get the other legs to follow, but that's not working. So I am going to bend this out slightly to help me out. That should be just enough. The first one, the second one, and I can see the third one. And we're in. Yeah, now this uh, Transistor is a place where you don't want to push it too far down because you could break those legs off. They're not that fragile, but you still want to be careful. Okay. Let's solder that puppy on there. Yep, let's see how that happened. Time to put the old man glasses on. Get a little more close-up vision here. I can see myself kind of missing the mark. Wow, okay, now I can hold it still. Get a better connection there. Let's come at it from the other side. Yeah, on a downhill slope towards me, makes it a little bit easier. I'm trying to get this middle one, if not, yeah, it's going to fight me. So now that I got the first two, or the outer ones, soldered on, I'm going to go ahead and cut them off so they don't get in the way while I try to get that middle one. Okay. 
the middle one. Now we do need to have it soldered on. If it's not soldered on, the circuit's not going to work. Dang it. I got another bridge. I just saw it happen. Alright. Now this is a little fiddly, so if you don't have enough experience, you might want to be a little careful with the smaller components like that, or where the leads are so much closer together. But give it a little time and you'll figure it out. That's got that on. That leaves me with the microphone, the chip, and the LED, the remaining LEDs. Um, oh! And I almost missed it. Look right here. Jumper 3. J3. That means I need to take a piece of wire and run it from one, one hole to the other hole. Are there any other jumpers on here? Yes, there are. Jumper 1, jumper 2. This is going to make it that much more complicated. I'm going to get that taken care of before I do anything else. I need to find the longest piece I have. This is where I said sometimes these come in handy for making jumpers. Well, that's what we're doing now. I'm going to use my pliers to form this. I've got to get the measurement about right. This is going to be fiddly. Let's straighten that out a little bit. My jumper is going to look kind of like a staple. Let me do this. I'm going to try and guess how far with my pliers. That is just about right. It needs to come in just slightly. And then I can bend on this side. Okay. The others are even shorter. It's going to make it more fun. Let's see if I can't take this and form it like I did the resistors. Okay, you can see it, it's sticking up proud. So I'm going to attempt... Wow, how am I going to do that? Because it's going to get in the way. Okay, pliers. Well, I may have to do this the hard way. Push it with my finger, but I'm going to have to be really careful because that's going to get hot. Let me think, is there another way to do this? Put something between my finger and that. I don't want to put one of these components, so I just need to find something handy. Ah! I swear this is not a promotion for my little circuit board, but it happens to be handy. I'm going to use that. Something that will insulate you from the heat. I felt it go home. Alright, that's better. It's not perfect, but it's better. Cut off the little bits. This was a surprise. All right. Rinse, repeat.
There we go. That's got the jumpers in there. Imagine if I hadn't discovered the jumpers. They're not in the instructions. They're not in the listing. Um, I don't know if... I'm looking to see... No, I don't see in the parts list any mention of jumpers. So they just failed to list it anywhere and it's on the circuit board. All right, that's everything but the microphone, the chip, and the remaining LEDs. Now the microphone might be polarized. Let's see if there's any markings. Okay, the only thing resembling a marking on the microphone is the fact that the underside of the microphone, you can see the pins are sticking up on one side of it. And on the circuit board, you also have, where did I put my pointer? The two holes are right here on one side of it. So I'm going to assume that that is the polarization. I don't know that microphones are actually polarized. I don't do a lot of projects involving microphones. So, there we go. It fits nicely in that circle. We'll bend these out just slightly. So it doesn't decide to crawl away on me there. Oh, it still kind of wants to move. Well, I think I can actually solder these on and then go back and make sure it works right. Oop. A little solder ball there. Where did you come from? Famous last words, right? Ah, oh, it doesn't work. Why? And then later he finds a solder ball somewhere. Let's hope not. Yeah, that's soldered. I got both of them. Now I'm going to heat them both up at the same time while pushing it to make sure it's flat. There we go. The reason I couldn't do that with the jumper is because the wire gets hot. Here I've got the rest of that component insulating me. So if I don't do it for too long, I'm good. And that's one lead. That's another lead. Okay. Now we're down to the chip. This jumper, which oddly enough is called a jumper uh, I believe what is it called? 2 pin J1 how could that be J1? that doesn't didn't I just do J1? oh don't tell me nope okay it's not me J1 J1 positive and negative um and as it turns out, the battery pack here, uh, there's no provision for plugging the battery pack in. That is the power connector for this thing. And there is no uh, connector on the end of the battery pack. So I think I'm just going to solder the battery pack directly on and ignore this piece. So let's just go ahead and do that now. Because I'm seeing it. I'm thinking about it. Let's get it done. There is a plus and a minus on this. And the red will be positive, or should be positive. Sometimes you never know. Foreign made components, they may have a different standard. Will it stay? Will it stay? It's staying for now, but it's in the wrong orientation. Let's try and get that first one in there. Okay, I've got at least a little solder ball to make it a little bit neater. There's plus. Well, oops. <laughs> um, the I guess my phone overheated while I was recording and I was just so em embroiled in what I was doing. Fortunately, we haven't missed much. Uh, I was in the middle of soldering the battery pack in and that is now connected. So I went through a whole explanation of trying to carefully put the, uh, the chip on and I started soldering. Let me just kind of give a quick review of that. 
there is right on here there is a tiny little bubble here this little uh, dimple actually uh, sometimes it's a bubble sometimes it's a dimple but that basically marks the first pin uh, these pins are actually numbered one in this case through 16 and on the circuit board and I'm going to try and get it in the shot because I don't know if I can you know what I'll pull it up from the listing and I'll show you a picture there and let me actually come back live here uh, there's a little notch there it's also there's also a notch on the chip you want to match those notches up that basically indicates the end of the chip that has pin one so hopefully that was clear that was the key was making sure you get this in the right orientation and then really the key is once you get it inserted which is a little fiddly but it can be done once you get it in the key is get one of them soldered down just one pin soldered on and then you can go back put your finger on on the other side of the chip and make sure as you put the soldering iron on the on the pin that you got push it down to make sure it's nice and flat and then from there it's just a matter of soldering all the rest of the pins on and that is where I am and I forgot to turn my soldering iron back on uh, realized the problem let my phone cool down while I went for a walk so in a second my soldering iron will be back up all right let's get the soldering this is just going to be a matter of getting all these pins connected If you're not used to soldering chips, it is even more fiddly than some of the other stuff, but definitely doable. What am I looking at here? I just noticed something. Is that the jumper? That is the first jumper that I discovered, and I have not soldered it in. So we'll get that while we're at it. That would have been a matter for diagnosis. There we go. I'm going to turn this whole thing. I'll try and stay in frame here. Kind of come at it from either side. Oops, I just bridged two pins together. I'll we'll have to deal with that in a minute. Right now there's no power going to the chip. So that's not really an issue. I'm also running out of solder. I'm not really running out. I've got a bunch of it. I'm just... I keep so much of it. Uh, that way I can hold it in my hand. Makes it convenient. If you watch Big Clive, he will grab a tiny little piece of solder and get so close to his fingers when he's soldering. It honestly scares me sometimes. All right, we're getting there. Okay, remelt a bunch of them just to make sure. You don't want heat on there for too long. Now I have to deal with that one solder bridge. I may be able to just reheat it and separate. Not quite. There we go, clean off my soldering iron. Keeping your tip clean does help. Um, I'm using one of these uh, things that looks kind of like uh, uh, like a wire mesh, what am I trying to think of? Steel wool. Uh, looks a lot like steel wool. Um, well, I'll just show you one of these. Um, I'll put that in my affiliates thing. Uh, if you need the equipment, I'll have a, I'll have my soldering iron. I'll have the solder sucker. I'll have uh, the, I'll have one of these. Maybe not the exact same one I got. I'll have some solder that you can buy, um, just so you can get the materials you need. Now, let's get back to s finishing this thing. Actually, there's enough here right now. I could probably test this thing out without blowing it up. And it's probably a good thing because I don't necessarily want to put all these LEDs in only to find out it's not working and then have to go through a whole other diagnosis. Um, I am at a point I can tell where I could check this out. So let me grab a few batteries. 
I think these are double A's in this battery pack. Yep. Good old IKEA batteries. Rechargeable. I'm not 100% sure if they're charged. We'll find out in a second. After I get this on, this should make the circuit. And the more I talk, the more this one should probably blink. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Oops, sorry, I'm bumping everything. Alright, I had a little interruption there. And all of a sudden it started working. Um, I know I'm talking into the microphone. I, I see it going faster, but I... There is something I can do to check that. Aha. I'm just wondering if it goes faster when I start talking more. But the weird thing about that is this is a self-blinking LED. So it should not really be... So let's see. This should probably... This is one of the ones that I was testing. It goes slow, then it goes fast. Then it goes slow again. I'm going put to put them next to each other there. And kind of see what it's doing. Yeah. Huh. I'm not sure what to make of this. If this is actually... Oh, it stopped. Ah, wait a minute. Let me try something here. That's weird. It seems to be blinking when it gets to about three. So, yeah, maybe the amplifier is not the greatest. But if you tap, it shuts off. So it's looking for sort of a lower pitch, more sudden sound, I think. In order, and it does kind of make sense because this is a digital, it's both analog and digital. The, the microphone is an analog part of the circuit. The chip is a digital chip. Uh, it's expecting those pulses. So somehow this is trying to convert the analog coming into the microphone into a digital signal. Um, all right, well, let's put the remaining, let's take the batteries out. Well, I'll just take one battery out. That should do the trick. Let me put more LEDs in there and we'll see what it looks like. This is kind of an interesting, I didn't really know exactly what I was getting into when I bought this. So let's see. Okay, uh, just to point out, there is clearly marked plus on here. And the LEDs have a longer lead for plus. So that's how I'm going to orient it when I put it in. Now I should probably put five of them in there because I suspect from the description what they were saying is it sounded like once you get to about five uh, of these LEDs along the top then it'll blink the one along the side uh, or basically alternate between turning it on and turning it off but it didn't quite seem to be acting that way so let's see now we've got these three Let's, well, I'll take that out of the picture. We'll put a battery back in. Should be non-responsive initially. I'm going to try tapping. That's really weird. It's like the LEDs are wired up in the wrong order. Pull the battery again. This is part of building kits, so sometimes you got to check. So I'm going to trace these here, and I'll be back in a minute. I just want to—I want to verify at a more uh, sort of high-tech level what's going on. 
Okay, I think I figured out where I went wrong here. Um, and it's not that I miswired anything. It's just my misinterpretation of what's going on here. For whatever reason, I'm thinking like in digital. I'm thinking left to right, least significant bit. You can look all that stuff up if you want. Um, really, though, the way this is supposed to be wired up, the first one to come on should be the one on the left, not the one on the right. So I'm going to put in... The first couple of, from that side, and we'll see if it indeed works the way I'm thinking. So we've got to get the orientation right. This is just testing. I still got four more to put in. That is bizarre. Either some of them are in backwards. I can reset the whole thing by taking the battery out, putting it back. One was popping on over there at position nine. Two is position ten. Three is back to nine. Four, interestingly enough, has now started up the one on the side. Five, back there, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Seems to have turned it off. Oh, it's probably one of the ones in the middle. Eleven, twelve, now that finally turned on. Thirteen, it's probably somewhere in the middle. Fourteen, fifteen. I'm confused, but uh, yeah, let's finish this up, and then I'll do some analysis and come back at the end. Uh, I did check the wiring, and it does look like they're kind of wired in order, but I don't know if it's something I did wrong. I'm going to have to do a diagnosis and figure out what's going on. Let's get the rest of these in. Okay, shall we try that one more time? Oh wow, right off the bat I've got something. It's hearing me. Alright, let's hit reset. Oh wow, wait a minute. All right, this should actually work with music in theory. So let's see if we can't bring up something from... And just like that, just as I'm about to play DJ, <laughs> my phone runs out of storage. So let's pick up where we left off. I'm going to play DJ here. We're going to test this out. We're going to start with Jazz Mango by Joey Pecoraro from the YouTube library. I'm going to turn it up a bit.
can kind of see it chasing across, but only on like real percussive beats. So let's try something different. How about Ditch Diggin' by the Jingle Punks? Closing music from my gardening videos. That's A Voila by Chris Haugen, and please forgive me if I mispronounced your name. Nice song, but not quite enough oomph to get it going. So, let's see, what else have we got here? Staycation by Corbin Kites. Yeah. Nicely demonstrated. What else have we got here that I can... Oh! Bumper Tag by John DeLay. Okay, and I just noticed something else. The... LED on the left lights up when it's one of the first five. That's what they were trying to say. One of the first five LEDs on the top, this lights up. Once it passes that point, this goes off. But if you got enough of a beat going on, you will see this kind of going on and off. So as they were mentioning in their own instructions, which are still not all that great, but uh, you could leave out number 11 here if you wanted to. That's the first possible hack off of this. And I may think of some others, but for now, I think we will uh, wrap up here as we fade. And I thank you for watching.